take care of yourself. My mother-in-law loved saying that to me all the time. But now she wanted to be taken care of because she got hurt in a car accident she caused. I'm her eldest son's wife, so she expected I would take care of her. Even though until now she's always harassed me, told me to take care of myself. Even if she needed help, the fact she's forcing it on me because I'm her eldest son's wife. I was reaching the limit of my patience. The anger inside of me exploded, and my true feelings for my mother-in-law came out like a raging torrent. My name is Chloe. I'm in my thirties and work as a pediatric care nurse in my city's general hospital. When I was in my twenties, I worked full time and did my graveyard shift. But since I gave birth to my son Paul, I decreased my number of shifts a bit. But working as a nurse, you rarely get to end work exactly at 5 p.m. If an emergency case came in, I would have to work overtime. Even if I had a night shift, I probably wouldn't be able to leave work exactly on time the next morning. But I was proud of my job, and put my all into it. I began living with my in-laws after I married my husband Francis. We built our new home on the same spot that my in-laws' house used to be, so they naturally began living with us. I wasn't against this at first, but my mother-in-law gradually began revealing her true nature, and it became very uncomfortable for me to be at home. My father-in-law was a man of a few words. So I never knew what he was thinking, and we never argued. But my talkative mother-in-law would always insult me the moment she sees me. Ah, why aren't you doing anything when you are the wife? Do you really think it's okay to keep forcing your husband and in-laws to do things for you? As she said that, she began to pick up toys scattered around my son's room. I knew that my son would make a mess again as soon as he saw his room was clean, so I always waited until he was asleep to start cleaning. Even though my mother-in-law also knew that very well, she would complain that I do nothing and pick up Paul's toys while groaning. I never asked her to do that, and I would clean when Paul went to sleep anyway. If I was stuck at work late and couldn't clean, Francis would do it for me, trying to make me seem like a bad person just because of this. Of course, I was annoyed with my mother-in-law. It was my husband who proposed we live together like this. Though I was busy in the hospital working as a nurse, Francis worked remotely and was nearly always at home. He wasn't very busy most of the time. So he would do a lot of housework himself. Most people would consider him a wonderful husband, because he did that. But of course, my mother-in-law didn't feel that way. A woman is supposed to do her housework, especially since you married into our family. You should do everything. And yet, you use my precious son this way. My mother-in-law didn't realize I was ignoring her. Or maybe she just didn't care. Not that my mother-in-law ever did anything around the house. She would laze around her room all day and leave the dishes she used unwashed, so that I would have to wash them when I get home from work. And if I use the dishwasher, the plates will chip. Wash them by hand. She would complain about even the smallest of things. I try to tell her. Please wash her dishes herself. In that case, since we are letting you use this land, you should do at least this for us. Your role here is to take care of our family. Take care of this yourself. My mother-in-law said things that didn't make sense again, so I let our conversation come to an end. Annoyed, I decided I will avoid talking to my mother-in-law. A few days passed. Francis was the one who usually took Paul to daycare, but since I had the day off work, I decided I would drop off Paul at daycare today. I don't know about other places, but at the daycare we go to, 
even if our parents has a day off on a weekdays, they are more than welcome to leave their kids at the daycare. All the parents knew and took advantage of that. But as I was heading out of the house with Paul, oh, you have the day off, but you are taking Paul to daycare. If you have a day off, you should also give Paul a day off. She began whining to me. Paul was three years old, and just got into a stage where he began throwing tantrums. If he was at home, he wanted to go out, and if he was out, he wanted you to carry him piggyback. If he was hungry, he would get very restless. Francis was busy with work, and Paul was at an age that will be difficult for me to take him out alone. The daycare says it's fine. I replied quickly. My mother-in-law didn't really like kids. She would get tired of taking care of Paul within ten minutes, which is why we took Paul to daycare, even though we lived with his grandparents. Anyway, I wanted to rest today, and Paul liked going to his daycare. He had even been saying since the morning that he wants to go, since they were holding some special event today. But no matter how I explained this to my mother-in-law, she wouldn't accept it. When I suggested she take care of Paul, then she wouldn't agree to that either. If we didn't leave soon, we wouldn't make it to the daycare until after 9 a.m. I didn't know what to do. Mom, Chloe works every day without resting. She also does housework and takes care of Paul. The daycare says it's fine. And Paul wants to go too, so let him go. My husband came to the rescue. Suddenly, my mother-in-law's anger turned into a smile. "You're right. Go out and enjoy." She sent us off so cheerfully it almost felt gross. Francis was her only son, so she really loved him. She would easily accept just about anything he told her. So he held a lot of power around the house. I thanked him, and Francis gave me a thumbs up and a carefree smile. After all that hassle, I finally sent Paul off to daycare. When I got home, Francis's car was gone. I usually drove a van I had bought myself, and my husband drove an old compact car. Seeing that his car was gone, I had assumed that Francis had gone out somewhere. But when I entered the house, he was sitting in the living room as usual. When I told him his car was gone, he rushed outside in a panic, and was shocked to see the driveway empty. His father was in his room watching TV. So since the car keys were gone, his mother must have gone somewhere. Francis covered his face with his hands, and he said his mother was a horrible driver. Just one month ago, she had gotten into a fender bender. My mother-in-law said it wasn't her fault, but when we checked the other car's dash cam, we saw that she had been tailgating them in the entire time. She was undeniably a bad driver. Francis and I had to do all we could to apologize to the other driver to avoid getting into even bigger trouble. We hid our car keys from her. But she somehow found them and went out driving again. My mom should still have insurance, as long as she doesn't get into an accident. Francis was mumbling this to himself. But our fears became reality. A few hours after she had left, I suddenly got a call from the hospital. It was a call from a colleague and friend of mine who worked in the emergency room. She told us that my mother-in-law had sustained huge injuries from a car accident, and was currently being transferred to the hospital. I told Francis and his father, and we rushed to the hospital in a panic. My mother-in-law was in the operating hall. We were outside waiting for her nervously when the police arrived. When we heard what had happened, we all went pale. According to the police. My mother-in-law was irritated that the car in front of her was driving a speed limit, so she was tailgating them. When the driver in front of her stopped at the red light, my mother-in-law slammed into them. Luckily, 
The driver in front of her was able to skillfully swerve their car, so that they avoided any big trouble. But my mother-in-law ended up driving straight into a telephone pole. It was lucky that no pedestrians were involved. But my mother-in-law had to be brought to the hospital because her lower body had been crushed, and she had lost consciousness. As we continued to speak to the police officer, my father-in-law announced that the surgery had finished. Fortunately, her accident hadn't been life-threatening, but her lower body was very hurt, and she had to have a leg amputated. Hearing that she was relatively okay, we all relaxed. After some time passed, we were told that my mother-in-law had woken up from her anesthesia, and my father-in-law rushed to her hospital room. Francis and I were speaking to the police officer about the person whose car my mother-in-law had hit, so we didn't make it to the hospital room until a bit later. When my mother-in-law saw me, look at this! This is the worst. I can't walk on my own anymore. You're my eldest son's wife, and you are useless around the house. So from now on, you better take responsibility and take care of me. She screamed at me. My father-in-law gave his wife a stern look, and Francis opened his mouth as if he wanted to say something. I had reached my limit. Until now, I'd been able to deal with her selfishness and accept the mean things she said to me. And in order to save her the trouble this time, I even spoke to the police for her, even though she only thought about herself. And just caused everyone around her trouble. She was now trying to force me to take care of her. I lost my patience. Shut up. Take care of yourself. That's what you always tell me, right? The anger inside of me exploded, and my true feelings for my mother-in-law came out like a raging torrent. I forgot that my husband and father-in-law were next to me. And I let out all my frustration at my mother-in-law. Francis's father is the one who letting us use the land, and he's the one who gives you all the money you use, right? You've been a housewife all your life, so you don't understand what it means to work full time like I do. I couldn't stop myself from letting everything out. I nobody would just timidly say. That full-time and part-time housewives should all help each other out as much as possible, but this time I couldn't leave it at that. You are supposed to be a housewife, so why don't you actually do something around the house for once? I even bought convenient appliances to help save us time and effort. You can't just hold on to your old-fashioned ways of thinking forever. If you hate that I use appliances so much. Do the cleaning and housework yourself. I want to take care of you. When I finally finished talking, Francis looked at me with a worried face. Maybe I went too far. Though I hated her, she was my husband's mother and my father-in-law's wife. Since I married into the family, maybe I should apologize. Chloe, you've been holding this in all this time, huh? I didn't notice at all. I'm sorry for being a failure as a husband," Francis said softly and hugged me. My father-in-law also sided with me. Chloe, you put all your effort into her family by keeping the house in order and raising Paul. I've always felt bad. I should have said something before. I'm sorry. He looked very apologetic. My mother-in-law was stunned to see that both her son and her husband. Were on my side. Wait, what are you saying? Why are you making it sound like I'm the bad person here? She began to make a fuss, but my father-in-law looked at her calmly. This all happened because you stole the car keys they had hid from you, driving without permission, and getting into this accident. It's all your fault. You need to accept that you are to blame here. Being told off by her husband, my mother-in-law slouched over. No matter what she tries to say, she's just getting what she deserves. 
She should be grateful. She lost her legs and not her life. Ultimately, no one came to visit her again, and she was lonely in the hospital until she was finally discharged. The day she was finally discharged from the hospital, she seemed very happy. After my mother-in-law had fully regained her consciousness, she was moved from the ICU into a regular ward. I heard from my friends who worked in that ward that she would attack the nurses there every day. I apologized to them countless times. At one point, I stopped hearing about her, and I wondered what had happened. Did you hear? A young patient in the same room as your mother-in-law told her off. The patient told your mother-in-law that she's too old to be treating the nurses like that. One of my colleagues told me in a bemused voice. Since that colleague knew about my mother-in-law had bullied me, she felt very satisfied. After that, other patient told my mother-in-law off. Now that my mother-in-law had quieted down, I could breathe a sigh of relief. My mother-in-law said the hospital was stifling, so she must have thought the being discharged meant she could be free again. But our punishment had just begun. Can you take a look at this? I handed my mother-in-law a pamphlet for an elderly care home. She immediately understood that we were planning to send her there. Why do I have to go there? Taking care of me is your job. She repeated again. Doesn't she understand what we all think about her by now? There is not one person in this house who wants to take care of you. If you can do everything on your own, you can stay here. But you realize that no one will help you, right? My mother-in-law's face got bright red, and she was seething in anger. Stop saying such stupid things. There's no way you can neglect me like this. She continued to bark at us like this, but no one wanted to take care of her. She wouldn't listen to any of my explanations. So Francis eventually had to force her to understand the harsh truth. Mom, you realize that getting discharged from the hospital didn't mean that everything was over, right? We haven't been able to sort out anything related to your accident. Can you take responsibility for totaling my car? By telling you to do everything yourself, we mean taking responsibility for your car accident as well. Being told this, my mother-in-law was silent. The driver of the other car recovered from all of their injuries within a month. Their passenger had just suffered from some minor scratches and bruises. My husband's car had been completely wrecked. Our insurance covered the damage of the other person's car, but not to my husband's. Since this wasn't the first time she had caused an accident. It was clear that my mother-in-law would also be punished by the law. Her driver's license would definitely get taken away, and she would probably have to pay around four thousand dollars in fines. And considering the compensation she would have to pay the other driver, she would have a lot of money to pay. If you have enough money to pay all your fines, buy Francis a new car and hire yourself a helper. Go ahead and do it. My mother-in-law had nothing more to say, so she finally gave up. She probably didn't think this would become such a big deal. We signed her up for the care home. We used her life insurance to cover the fines. She had to pay the care home cost. Since she had lost one of her legs, she was able to receive disability from the government, which helped a lot. Her driver's license was taken away, and since she was living in the care home, she would likely never have access to a car again. But it seemed her life in the care home isn't all that great. Since she has a bad personality, she hadn't been able to make any friends. She continuously insults all the other residents and attacks the caretakers, so everyone hates her. We rarely ever visit her, though, so we don't bother ourselves with that. 
She has no one by her side, and lives a lonely life. A huge took place in her home since my mother-in-law moved out. First, with my father-in-law. Fishing is dirty, and just a waste of money. My mother-in-law was against my father-in-law's hobby, but now that she was gone, he could finally enjoy fishing again. He would leave the house early, or sometimes disappear late at night. He's been catching all kinds of fish recently, and letting us taste all of them. Some of his friends are professional fishermen, so he even gets enjoy riding on their fishing boats with them. He used to just stay in his room all day, but now he's energetic and living his life the way he wants to. With the stress of my mother-in-law gone, I got pregnant with Francis and I's second child within three months. Surprised and happy at the same time, our family is now eagerly awaiting the birth of our new baby.